What's going on guys? So today I got a, uh, a large heavy box in the mail um, and wasn't expecting anything. Open it up and it is this month's Crate Club. All right, so first I just wanna say thank you to the person who sends these. It is extremely generous. Uh, it's a nice way for me to obviously check this stuff out. Um, but I did wanna make it clear that I didn't buy this. These are just sent by someone. So I do appreciate that a great deal. Uh, I don't wanna do any uh, spoiler alerts. So I'm gonna put this off to the side for now. I'm gonna save it, you know, so I can grab it and reference things if I don't know what I'm looking at here. But here we go, it's a big old box full of stuff. And just uh, ripping it open two seconds ago, um, <laughs> there's some goodies sitting right on top. All right, first thing in the box, very familiar black and yellow box. This is a Leatherman. What Leatherman though? We have a Raptor, black and orange Raptor. <clears throat> very cool. Oh, no, I gotta. We gotta cut that. All right. That's why you need a knife to open more cutting utensils, right? <laughs> more knives, more gear. Well, if uh, if I remember correct, the Raptor is more of a scissor. Yes, it is. I want to say I have a Raptor, or at least I've had a Raptor before. <clears throat> I never had a black and orange combination though. Very cool utility um, scissor multi tool. All right. So this swings around, and we have very awesome shears essentially with some other tools integrated as well but yeah really cool i want to say i did a, a, a complete video on this before so um you know do a little uh, search on here i use cutlery lever as a tag for everything i do all right so it should make things easier to find and i put this in here is that right there we go okay uh yeah so like let's say you're looking for this a raptor type in cutlery lever raptor um, you know, when you post videos on YouTube, you can put keywords and stuff. I've always, since the very beginning, used the word cutlery lever to make searching a little bit easier. However, for some reason, some older videos, they just can't be found. There's videos that I know I've made, and I cannot find them. So I don't know if, like, certain ones, if they don't get enough views or something after a certain amount of time, I have a conspiracy theory that YouTube just deletes those. It's like, ah, eh, no one's watching it. We need the room, and just goodbye. Uh, that may or may not be true. I don't know. But anyway, that is a, an awesome start to this box. Love the Lenemans. Let's put that off to the side. And what is the next thing we have here? This is a single mount pistol holder. All right. I've actually had this as well. Um, I have this a certain place. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to say exactly where. They're showing some, um, some options here within gun safes and stuff. But Essentially, this is just a mount that goes in the wall that has this rod, okay, that sticks up. And the whole purpose of that is that you can put the rod through the barrel of the gun. You can angle this any which way you want, all right? And this way you have a gun that's, uh, you know, held somewhere for convenience. Maybe just to get to it quickly in a self-defense situation. Maybe it's just a storage option, which is, uh, you know, another option. Options are good. But these are pretty useful. Just depends on, uh, you know, where you might want to use something like this. But these do come in handy. So that's very cool. So, moving on to the next item, which is, <laughs> this is, I have one of these. This is a must have if you are into firearms and all the gun people, all the gun guys and women, you know what's up with these. But we have an Uplula. And the Uplula is a speed mag loader. These things will save your thumbs, all right, and fingers. Um, it really is amazing how easy it is to, uh, to load magazines with one of these uh, as opposed to just doing it by hand. Especially like, you know, let's say you have like, a, I don't know, 15 round capacity in a magazine. You, the first couple rounds, no big deal. You know, you get to like 10, starts getting a little bit stiffer. You know, you get to number 13, 14, and 15, and you're really struggling in some cases. It just depends on, you know, what particular magazine. But these are seriously a lifesaver. So if you're into guns and you do actually shoot them and you need to load ammo into the magazines, multiple times this is a must all right and this obviously is from nine millimeter all the way up to 45 acp all right so what is next we have ooh, we got these in a battle box this is a spartan fire tinder um i have not used these i actually set this aside purposely to do a demo so you will absolutely see a demo on these in the future i don't know exactly when uh, made in usa these have like multiple uses um, but obviously fire starting is supposed to be the uh, the biggest and uh, I'm very curious to see how these work. So seriously, stay tuned. There will definitely be a video on that in the future. 
All right, next up, something camouflage. I don't know what this is. Garbage. Crate Club Camo Wooby Poncho Liner. A Wooby Poncho Liner. Interesting. You know what's funny? I'll tell you a quick little story. Wooby's. That is something <laughs> my father, this is a total aside, but my father claims to have made up lots of words. Wooby is one of those things. Um, it's just funny because, you know, people think of the same ideas. My dad also claims to have uh, came up with the word uh, smegma or schmegma. Uh, that is not true. My mom's actually argued that with him because my grandmother used that word uh, when she was younger, when my mom was a kid. Um, him and his best friend, Sean, uh, God rest his soul. But, uh, you know, they used to say, uh, I love you, man, you know, way before it was a thing in, in beer commercials. You know what I'm saying? So there, there's, and there's multiple, multiple uh, sayings. Here's a great one. It is what it is. My dad claims to have come up with that. I'll tell you what though, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree because I came up with the term everyday carry or EDC. And some of you are probably laughing right now, but I'm telling you, I, I, I did not originally come up with it. I should, I should clarify that. It's not like I thought, hmm, this is a great acronym. No, I was the one, in my opinion, uh, solely in my opinion, who popularized that because it was something I saw on knife forums like 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, no one was saying it. I came to YouTube, started saying it, and uh, here we are. Everything is EDC, right? Um, but you know what? There's no validity to these claims. They're just claims. But the reason I bring it up is because Whoopies is what my father calls cut off sweatpants. All right. So when a pair of sweatpants gets old and messed up, he cuts the legs off, you know, and makes sweatpants shorts, which ironically are sold these days. I actually saw them like last year at Walmart or something. So that was not a thing. That was something he created. <laughs> so he has the claim on whoobies. But these are not cut off, you know, um, sweatpants. So it, let me see what this is. This is why I say this here for, for reference. Oh, it's right here. Crate Club Poncho Liner. The Poncho Liner, AKA Whoopi, has been the comfort blanket of military men and women for decades. Uh, we took the same blanket and added a zipper to easily convert this into a sleeping bag. Uh, this will quickly become your favorite blanket for all things. The options are endless and the US woodland camouflage pattern makes it so much cooler. 100% ripstop uh, polyester shell and 100% polyester batten. So yeah. Weighs 1.9 pounds. This is a, I mean, it's one of those things. It might not be that exciting for some people out there, but super, super useful. And uh, this will just go right into our uh, our camp gear. You know, I'll probably use this as an insert, you know, to stay extra warm on the sleeping bags that we already have, or maybe just use it on its own as a light sleeping bag, you know, in, in the warmer weather months. All right, so moving on. We have box. There's garbage. Half breed blades. So we got a knife. We love our knives. Ooh. Interesting. CCK-05 in black. That looks like a fascinating blade. All right, so half breed blades. I don't think I've had anything from them before. <clears throat> Ooh, interesting. All right, so what's in here? A little uh, welcome pouch. All right, we got a cool sticker. We have some papers in here. All right, oh, this is awesome. I wish every knife came with this kind of stuff. I say it all the time. Every knife should absolutely have a card with all the specs on it for everyone who wants to know. So there are all the specs, everything you can possibly need to know about this. All right, you can pause the screen there. half -free blades from South Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Very cool. I don't know offhand if I have a knife specifically from Australia. Um, yeah, I mean, I might have some kind of a peasant knife or, or version of a peasant knife from Australia. I just can't think of off the top of my head. But yeah, certificate of authenticity. That's very nice. Cool. And is there anything else in here? Yeah, there's more stuff in here. Jeez. The whole little welcome package. We got a nice uh, Velcro patch, which is very neat. Actually goes like that. And it's a business card. So there's some contact information as well. If 
you're interested in their other blades, which uh, after this video, I'm certainly going to look into because I want to see other stuff that they offer too. So, put this off to the side and check out this knife. Okay, well first off, is there anything else? There's a finger hold in here. Yes, there is. We have our sheath and we have a tech lock, looks like. Wow, all right, first off, kudos to the sheath. All right, I love, am I putting this in the right way? Yes, I am. I love this minimalist design, all right? A sheath that actually fits the blade. It's not like, pfft, you know, very cool. Just lock in. It might have locked in. <clears throat> I see there's a, there's a band around here. I don't want to force anything. Hmm. Okay, so that's just the clipping mechanism. There's a little bar that slides that that locks on there. So that's very cool. All right, so push that forward, unlocks, put it to the belt. I can relock it so it's not going to accidentally come undone. But I don't want to, well, all right, let's see. Off camera here, let me give it a good tug. All right, so it's just, it's really in there. You know, it's pressure fit, snaps in, but it takes a good little tug to get that out. That is not going to accidentally fall out. D2 blade, quite thick as well. You guys can really tell that, but that is a thick blade. It does taper in the back, but the back's not sharpened. All right, just single edge, which a lot of people will appreciate just because of laws. Big old chunky handle, but honestly, this fits in the hand very nicely. Almost has like kind of a, a push dagger feel to it, which is very different. It, it looks like it might be uncomfortable because it's such a fat hand. It's such a thin little area here, but this actually fits your hand very nicely. Big, deep finger choil. All right, and then the little uh, thumb uh, ramp that's in there, it does have jimping. It's very purposeful jimping there. All right, and obviously in any kind of a stabbing motion with this, because this is tapered and has almost a um, dagger style blade, it's going to offer less resistance in going into something as opposed to keeping that nice and thick on the, the back end. So that is really cool. I mean, as far as like a defensive blade, there's no reason not to sharpen the back. Um, it's thin. It would not take too much to actually get that sharp all right so that would be up to you as the the owner of the knife but that's something i would definitely do if i was going to carry this you know for a defensive purpose uh, as far as reverse grip these little you know kind of curved cutouts do offer some comfort but it's nowhere near as comfortable in reverse grip than it is a forward grip which most people are using anyway so that is really really neat i do love this system this uh, clip system a lot and i just i really i can't tell you how much i appreciate this this sheath being so small. I want a neck knife with a nice small, like I want this same knife, exact knife with like maybe a little, a smaller T handle, you know, like push dagger style uh, or punch dagger, whatever you might call that. You know, if this was lighter weight, cause this is, this is heavy. It's a decently thick piece of steel. And what's interesting too, is that these handle scales wrap around. So it's, it's not like an exposed spine. All right, obviously it's full tang. It sticks out the bottom here. But they wrap around both on the front and the and the back. Excuse me. So that's really cool. All right. And obviously you can see the hardware there, so you can take it apart if you wanted to. Which I am curious. I'll probably end up taking this apart to see what it looks like on the inside because I would dig this as a neck knife as well without these big old chunky handles. Depending on how comfortable it is, you know, with just the the metal. But that is a total win right there. I am curious though. Let's uh, take this out. Put this back in. I'm curious on the price on these. I don't really even have a guess. Let's see. Let's play the game. How much? Um, I would definitely say over a hundred bucks. But I don't know how much over a hundred bucks. Don't want to be a spoiler alert here. Um, you know it doesn't say. Do any of these say? No, they don't. They don't have prices on here like suggested retail prices. Interesting. All right, half breed blade CCK-05, compact clearance knife. Okay, that's what the CCK is. CCK or compact clearance knife from half breed, half breed blades is designed primarily as an easy to reach backup knife with superior cutting capability due to its size and weight. The CCK-05 is an ideal choice where space on an assault platform may be limited. Talking about like a you know, tactical vest or something maybe, although it is heavy. These heavy duty blades uh, 
Also bridge the gap where full size fixed blades may be unmanageable and a folder a uh, poor compromise. All right, so obviously a folder being a compromise on strength, but that could be argued depending on what folder you're talking about. Um, fixed blade knives may be, I mean, okay, I already read that, influenced by a diverse daily requirements of active duty personnel and the environments from, uh, or environments they serve in. The CCK05 is made with purpose and go anywhere toughness. Okay, interesting. So there's the other little talking points and some more specs back on it. So yeah, I mean, I, I totally dig it. I think it's really cool. I don't know what it costs, <laughs> but, uh, oh, whoops, that doesn't go in there. But yeah, nice. You guys know I love everything sharp, cheap, expensive, strange, normal, boring, exciting. I just love knives. I love them all. So there you go. We got a knife in this box, which is always fun. All right, so moving on, it looks like there are two more things in here. These are both heavy things. This would made this box so heavy and we have a con case now we got one of these con cases in a battle box and this one ooh, okay so this is like <laughs> this is the tactical one let's get this out of here so the other one we got in our battle box was i want to say green and blue maybe and uh clearly this one is the, the very uber tactical, um, looks like maybe a, I don't know, a little bit darker than a coyote tan with a green accent. Okay, so our little valve here, our rubber insert for handle, the snaps, the locks on the snaps, those are like a mossy green. Very, very cool co color combination. All right, so if you don't remember that or haven't seen it, these pull down and then open. Okay, so that's a little bit of security to this. But, uh, but yeah, so we have just a deep case, all right, puck foam. Now what I was gonna say before, we have a big old thick one and then another one on the bottom. These are, again, puck foam, so they have the different squares in here. You pull out what you want to accommodate a perfect fit. Um, the first con case I loved and my wife took it. <laughs> That's just how it works. She's like, oh, you know, I really need a case for such and such. I'm like, all right, cool. No big deal, go ahead and have at it. And, uh, and she loved it. She does love the case, but she found, and this is feedback from the wife, um, she found that this pluck foam, for some reason, was a little bit more difficult than, like, the pluck foam you would get <clears throat> inside, like, a Pelican case, for example. Okay, now, obviously, the Pelican cases are probably the most expensive brand. I'm sure there's other hard cases out there as well that can compete that, who knows, maybe even more expensive. But, you know, this, this size case from Pelican, who knows what that would be, 150 bucks or something? I have no idea. Um, they are ridiculous. I, I did a video years ago shooting one with a shotgun and nothing, no damage at all. Like literally barely scratched the, uh, the resin plastic on the outside, which was uh, pretty amazing. But uh, yeah, long story short, cool cases. But she, and again, feedback from her, she said this is a little difficult to work with. Maybe the separations are thicker, who knows. But when you're doing these pluck foams, and I think I did a video on this showing the toothpick method. But when I do it, and I'm probably ending up using this case and she took the other one. Um, but I come in and I'll take a very sharp knife and I'll actually slit these. All right, so let me go back to the old uh, EDC and show you what I'm talking about. So let's say I want to make a cut here, right? Uh, instead of just plucking them apart, you know, in all four sides and pulling it out, I will come in and I will actually just make the slit, okay, to separate it. And I do that very carefully so that when you go to pluck it, it's not pulling other ones as well an accident, all right? So that's the, the little tip for... Uh, pluck foam so yeah that's uh that's pretty much it do love these cases and this is just a really really cool color combination i want to use this probably for knives as you can imagine i have lots of knives and i have different specific knife collections for different reasons and like for this one because it's deeper like this i really just like the height on this actually let me see this might give us the dimensions in here Yes, it does. The outer size is 12 by 10 by 8, or for the international viewers, 304 millimeters by 248 mil by 203 millimeters. All right, the inner size, which is the more important part, 9.25 inches by 7.28 uh, by 7.32 or 235 by 185 by 186. All right, shock resistant, uh, engineering plastic, PP, PP plastic. <laughs> but anyway, those are the dimensions. 
uh, the fact that it's it's deeper like this is really going to accommodate uh, full-size knives like for example I have a hard time storing battle songs because battle songs are long generally speaking of course I have short ones as well but more than likely this is going to be dedicated for my like more expensive collectible battle song collection that's at least my idea right now for it who knows what it's actually going to turn into I'm constantly changing my mind but with that pluck foam, once you decide what you want to do, that, you're pretty much stuck with that. Now, you could buy pluck foam online, but it can get quite expensive. In some cases, it's better just to buy another cheaper case. Like, I like the Apache cases. I think it's called Apache um, from Harbor Freight, you know, but uh, I haven't you know, really gotten one in a long time. I, have, I just have so many different cases for so many different things. It's just hard because I don't have places to store this stuff. You know, half the stuff that I own is at different locations. My house is extremely small, so I can't even keep everything here which is uh, a pain to say the least. You know, sometimes I'll be doing a trade with someone and like, all right, I want this knife and all right, well, that's not here. I got to wait until I can go somewhere else to go pick it up. So it's just uh, storage is always an issue. But anyway, if you don't have a storage issue, these cases are fantastic. Just super hardcore. I mean, if you're going to just take something like this and stick it in your closet, you don't really need something like this. You know what I'm saying? It is nice. You could put padlocks on here if you wanted to, some kind of locking system so that no one's going to be peeking around and seeing what's inside your stuff. But for me, I actually transport things back and forth. So having a sturdy case where the contents are not getting damaged, that's always a bonus. Very cool. But you can use this for anything. I might, who knows, maybe I put magazines in here. Maybe I just load this up with like uh, AR mags or something. I don't know. So only time will tell. But for now, I definitely dig the color combination. So, you know, maybe that was meant to be. Maybe the, uh, the wife wanted the first one, because I know, I mean, she likes colors like this too, but the first one she kind of dug because it was a little bit brighter and different. So it's just, it works out in the end. So let me uh, put this off to the side, and we have one more thing in here, which is super heavy. Ooh, okay. That's why that's so heavy. We have a gun safe. Well, a gun vault. This one's really interesting. I've seen this style before. I have never tried this specific one. This one is a Speed Vault, it's a uh, SV500, all right? And so you can see the style here. It's a tall, long one, okay? So we have our electronic access buttons, all right? So you put whatever code into that that you program, and then the obviously the, the side drops out, okay? And it has a, a pistol that's gonna be in there, and it's gonna be in a position where you can grab that quickly. Um, it's really fascinating. It looks like there's mounting holes on either side, so you can mount this up against something, Curly stows your uh, handgun and then access it quickly with the gravity LED drop down door. Now, some people have uh, mixed feelings as far as electronic safes go. Let me back up here. Man, I was close. Hopefully you saw everything I was showing you. Um, some people have some, I mean, there's, there's a couple ways to look at it. It's very secure. Most times when you're storing your gun, it's to keep it safe um, so that uh, a thief will not have easy access to it. If you have children in the home, they have no access to it. Um, if you have company over, they have no access to it. So like I said, the majority of the time in your life, you're not using your gun to defend yourself. You're just storing it. <clears throat> so there's always a balance. Like over here is just loose guns on the table. So you have the quickest access to it possible in case someone rips your front door off and you have no time to react. And then all the way over here, you have the, my gun is absolutely safe and there's no possible way anyone can ever access it. Um, but it's going to be really slow to get. Do you know what I'm saying? The extremes, like taking your gun, you know, keeping your magazines in a different vault, you know, so you don't even have access to ammunition. Some people even take their guns apart, okay, so their kids can't possibly get access to them. You know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't pass judgment on whatever you decide to do, whether you have a loose gun on the middle of your table, uh, ready to go. I definitely don't suggest that if you have any kind of kids or company, uh, all the way down to having your, your slides and frames you know, on your, your pistol separated so that uh, there's no way that someone's going to quickly grab that and use it. But whatever you do, this is just an option. As I mentioned, options are good. But going back to this specifically, like some people like biometric, you know, like fingerprint uh, type access. Some people like the buttons, you know, but it's electronic. Electronics can fail. Now, if the batteries die in this system, there is a, a, a keyhole in order to override that. I've seen videos where people pick these, okay? So this looks like, wow, this is super crazy safe. Not necessarily. There's, a, I mean, you could, you could find them yourself, find those videos. Um, but you could pick these safes and with not too much practice. It's actually kind of scary. So there's might, there might be a, a, I don't know, a false sense of security as far as 
you know, how hard it is to access these. But the idea is someone breaks into your house and they're not gonna quickly do that. You know what I'm saying? If this is attached to a, a, a large side table or your bed or something like that, they're gonna have to try to rip it off, pry it off before they can get into it. Um, so generally speaking, it's a good thing to have, you know, so that it's not as quickly accessible. But you have to keep all these things in mind. This is not foolproof. You know, if you want to get into this without the key or the combination, you can certainly do so. That's my point. Um, but yeah, these are really cool. Let's see what the uh, paperwork shows. Maybe it gives you an example. Uh, yeah, they give you an example here of what it looks like on, like, a side dresser. You know, so, I mean, for a lot of people, they might mount this. On your side table, in between the table and the bed, let's say it's kind of out of sight, out of view, not so easily recognized, you know, but if you're woken up in the middle of the night, you don't have to get up and do stuff. You don't, you know, like some people keep loose guns in their, their dresser drawer. Again, it's, it's totally up to you what you want to do. It's quick access, but quick access is not always a good thing. Remember, our regular lives, we're not shooting people, you know, we're, we're just living. And you want to keep those guns extremely, extremely uh, safe and protected against the people who don't have the uh, access they're supposed to have to them, you know So I mean it's an option options are good So if you're cranky and, and just you know crack an eye because there's a big bang downstairs or in the living room or who knows where uh, And you could just reach over and just be like boop 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 and then you have your gun in your hand, you know within five seconds That's a fantastic thing, right? But uh, yeah, keep all these things just in mind as far as picking how to store your guns but that uh, that concludes this crate club, there is definitely some really cool stuff in here. Um, the knife is very fascinating. I'm not sure if I'll do another video on it in the future, uh, just because it's kind of, it's geared a little bit more towards a backup knife and a defensive style blade. You know, it's not like the best utility knife, so it's not like I'm gonna go out in the woods and, and use it to, you know, build a fire or something like that. Uh, but I think it's really cool, you know, and maybe I'll post something on Instagram in the future or something if I, uh, you know, play around with it a little bit more, if I, my opinions change or something. But uh, I love all this stuff. As far as the Leatherman, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure I did a video on the Raptor in the past. So I'll have to dig that up and, and see if I actually did. So that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a fantastic day. And, uh, well, I was going to say, let me know how you store your guns, but that's not a good idea. Don't. Don't do that. Don't tell everyone on the Internet how you store your guns. Uh, I have all different kinds of ways that I do my thing, you know, and I'm very comfortable with it. I think it's a good compromise between accessibility and safety. But everyone does their own thing. So you do you. Just make sure it is safe. And I cannot stress that enough. So many people who have kids in the house, maybe kids a little, and you think like, no big deal, they can't reach this area, you know, or they're not smart enough to do this. Trust me, they are. Okay, they will find something to climb on and they will be mischievous because when you make something taboo and they know about it, kids are curious, you know? So, I mean, you guys know this already. Uh, I'm kind of beating a dead horse. Everyone has heard this before, but maybe there's one person out there that just hasn't heard it in a while and needs to be reminded. So if you do own firearms, you need to take a moment to really think about how easy it is to, be, uh, to, to access that gun uh, or many guns um, without your knowledge. You know, and, and you might have to rethink about how you store those. But anyway, that is all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Take care.